Um, I am, for descriptions, I am Laura Brody, and I am a middle-aged Caucasian woman with brown hair, to shoulder length, uh, in front of a full bookshelf. Welcome, Kat. Um, hi, thanks. Uh, my name is Kat Chetty. I am also a middle-aged uh, Caucasian person. I am non-binary. Um, I have dyed hair that is orange and blue and red, and I'm wearing a blue and red shirt with red flowers on it. I was going to say great matching. <laughs> Unintentional, but... <laughs> yeah, you know, if it works, right? But this is, you started showing stuff uh, in 2021 yeah. with your medication quilt, which was yeah. really super cool. Uh, how did you find Opulent Mobility in the first place? Um, I think it was online. Uh, I was very deliberately starting to make work about my disability and disability in general and wanted to find venues that supported that kind of work um, because I felt like it often wasn't in general art shows. And so I felt like it was a good starting point. Yeah, there are a lot of shows out there, but aren't there aren't that many that focus on disability. No, and not with this particular perspective either. Um, I yeah. think we've had lots of conversations about um, this idea of trauma porn. And I think, that, you know, yeah. venting the pain and, and the anger and these negative emotions is important. But I think it's also really important to kind of frame how people see disability in a positive light as well. Um, yeah. So I was interested in this idea of opulent mobility and reframing you know, the things that people consider to be a drag, like mobility devices and how those can be reimagined. Yeah, I just, I love that that idea can work and that it's not the, oh, let's just put a, a happy face on it. We're still talking about a lot of the stuff that's difficult, but it can be done in a way, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit more accessible emotionally. Can you tell us about these wearables you've been doing? Because I've been really excited. I'm the, uh, you did one for last year, which is the sick coat, which is amazing. And this particular year, it's the anxiety coat. This, look at that thing. It's amazing. <laughs> um, so this the, one's been the, around too. It's like gone up to some shows in New York and um, also won best in prize at the Turner Spring into Art show in Valdosta. So that was- Congratulations. Um, yeah. <laughs> To jump back to the earlier question about like how did I get into the wearables, I think the quilt was a, was a starting point because I made the quilt. And then I think that where it really started becoming an interesting art object is when I activated it with the photographs. And so it became like, you know, a quilt is a comfort object, but it's something different to see someone you know, wrapping themselves in it, especially when the quilt has imagery on it related to daily medication and care related to disabilities. It's, it's also, it's just such a warm and inviting thing, something we associate with that. But you don't always associate medication with comfort in that same way externally. And it's such a neat way to look at it. Um, I think also I've been thinking, now you're getting me like you always do to think about these things in a different way. And I think there's something about the use of fiber and this idea of like the fiber of your being. So I feel like mm. these are the most appropriate, for me, the most appropriate material expression of a lot of these ideas that are the, such a part of me and many other people, like anxiety. So how did this represent anxiety? So this one's complicated, like the the growth one is. So it's it's reflecting those ideas that are both positive and negative. So it's for the negative ideas. It's very, very heavy. Um, that might mm. be something that may or may not have come across in the piece. The way that anxiety makes you feel that people know that you're freaking out. Visual explosion of that invisible thing that you feel like everyone can see anyway. So, and I feel like that's been a theme in my work for a really long time is taking invisible things and making them visible. But then on the flip side of this, it's also this like protective thing. It looks like a suit of armor almost. It's also soft. So that can be like a hug um, and it made me think of anxiety blankets to the way that they're soft, but also weighted. Um, and then the pearls are all this idea of squeezing wisdom out of these um, negative experiences. Yeah, because that is, it's telling you something. 
Your anxiety is telling you something. Speaking of somebody who has it. I think I wrote moment. about that for my description of it on my Instagram. It's like a, it can be this thing that is a burden, but it's also something that like, you know, keeps me going back to the studio. I always want my work to be really good. So there's anxiety around creating artwork that can be productive as well as harmful. So it's seeing that even these disorders can be complicated, complex experiences. Yeah, absolutely. So textiles in general, they just were calling to you because they're like warm and inviting or uh, what is it about them that you love? Um, this idea of, like I was saying, the fiber of your being, yeah. thinking about fiber of material, also the fact that we wear, we wear clothing, um, our contact with cloth, whether it's through clothes or in the bed. Um, in medical care. And I feel like it's something that's just such a part of human experience, but yeah. it's especially a thing that's considered in disabled experience. Absolutely. I'm going to share your medication quilt as well. I Thanks love that it. one when you're <laughs> cozied up into it, but that that's something that's such a lovely idea. And that it's really it's also so sort of surprising. It's one of the things that Anthony and I really love about your work, that it's just oh, you didn't necessarily think about it that way. I struggled with this one at the time because I made the quilt. I spent like a month making it, longer oh. to print, print the things. And then I saw the photograph when it was done and I said, did I just expend all of this effort to make a prop? Um, <laughs> so, well, <laughs> well, technically, yeah, I guess. But so at first it was like not comfortable for me because I don't know, I feel like as an artist, they put so much emphasis on the object that you, the discrete object that is created. So I was struggling with, do I put these up and show them at the same time? Do I only show the object? Do I show just the photograph? Am I a photographer now? So this kind of inspired an existential crisis for me. <laughs> oh no. Uh, but in a good way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's something about when the idea comes to you, sometimes you're just, I don't know, you you are the conduit for the idea. And I, I think now I've settled on, I like having the photographs next to the object, even though that is always a thing that's questioned, especially in the art world. But I think it gives, it gives the, the whole thing more context. Like it would be different if you just saw the photograph versus just the quilt. And there's something interesting about the relationship between the object and the the body my body you know yeah I, I love that with the sick coat you know that that's you become the art yeah i'm actually yeah. reading a book right now uh called how to become a work of art <laughs> what is this book that's awesome boris groys i think i just started it um okay it's relatively like recent scholarship but they're talking about this this idea of the artist as as the artwork and kind of how you need yeah no then that, because then it is it's a statement about the coat and it's also a statement about you in a different way which is kind, just kind of a neat thing to do i also feel like you know i tried putting these on mannequins and it just kind of sucked the life out of especially the actual clothes so the photographs much better than you know them on these kind of dead forms really I, do you prefer that sort of action of having it lived in yeah i think so this is something i'm trying to figure out for my thesis work honestly is do i want them on displays do i want them to be performed in um, am I going to wear one? Do I want other people to attend? I'm, I'm going to have like kind of a party thing going on and have guests at the party. Another suggestion was to have like, especially things like the coat hanging off of an empty chair, almost as an invitation to bear or experience this state of being. That would be really cool. Still trying to work that one out for myself. I think that's that's certainly worth pondering and there'll be ways you can figure it out. But I always like that because you can add in these different layers to your work and play with it. I like the idea of them as props too. Are you is yours more character driven a lot of your work? 
maybe like I know I have main character syndrome just like everybody else does <laughs> yeah yeah but it's it's a thing I also think about other people wearing these too so I I would like, uh I have fantasies of like maybe a drag queen buying one of these pieces or <laughs> that would be pretty awesome you were telling me about your latest piece, the uh, Red Flag series, which I really love talking about an interactive experience. <laughs> yeah. And I've started doing this, I guess, audience participation thing more where I'm either throwing questions out to the internet and gathering responses from other disabled individuals or the immediate Wait. people around me. And, and the work has started expanding a little bit. So this also gave me kind of a crisis moment because I started making this and I was really happy you know in my studio making the pieces but then I kept asking myself is this still about disability or am I like completely veering off course is that okay to do um, but then as I thought about it more and more I realized that this is this is still disability this is still about you know PTSD and trauma because when I thought about what all the red flags had in common at the end of the day, because I asked everyone, what are, what are your most like glaring red flags that you see out in the world? Three responses came back overwhelming, and that was hypocrisy, gaslighting, and willful ignorance. Kept thinking about it for weeks. Well, what do these things have in common? Unresolved trauma. Yeah. So at the root of all of this is, you know, people carrying their own trauma, whether they want to acknowledge that or not. So then I thought... Why don't I give people an invitation to own their trauma? And that's the name of that series is Own It. And so people will have conversations with me or we'll have the conversation in a group. And what fascinates me about this is how it takes a really uncomfortable subject. Like, let's all sit around and talk about our problematic behavior. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and it makes it lighthearted. And so when we start having yeah. conversations, it's not like this heavy, like, oh God, intervention kind of mood. Let's talk about what we do that's, you know, problematic. And we start laughing about it immediately. Like, haha, I don't, you know, I, I have double standards. I'm a hypocrite at times. <sighs> and then we just kind of all realize that we're human beings and we all do problematic things at times. So, and I think this is, you know, yeah. kind of digging back at, cancel culture because like sometimes I think it's necessary but oftentimes I think it like ends the potential conversation for things to get better you know and just shut yeah L learning how to do that in a more in a way that also involves humor and also involves gentleness and and look I think it's important to call out crappy behavior but yeah. when you're doing nothing but that it is a lot more no you you're the problem. You, you, no, uh, don't look at me. The next permutation that happened with this is like, okay, I'm asking all these people to point the fingers at themselves. I'm calling out problems I see in these institutions I'm a part of. And I was like, I can't leave myself out of this. Yeah. So I, I made myself a red flag suit that I am currently working on. <laughs> Yay. I'm so excited to see this. Um, and I'm they are gonna... literally red flags, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and covered. I'm just covered in it. It's a full body suit with a, a hood and a mask piece. So nice. it's being subsumed into this idea of that I'm the problem, you know, <laughs> and, and being, you know, making fun of it a little bit. <laughs> because I have the complex PTSD and so some of it, I didn't even think it was a disability. But yeah, and those those sorts of things, right? We're all kind of capable of being the monster you know yeah and so sometimes it is the question of instead of just pointing your finger at it, it's like we're all we all have that capacity what can we do to say okay I acknowledge this part of myself it sounds like people have been having fun with a red flag thing though yeah I really like it I'm about to send a batch out to I'm going to try doing some photos with people remotely i'm trying to figure out how this will work um, oh you can do it through zoom cool I, I was like i hope the resolution will be good enough because i have one friend that's in miami that i'm sending flags to um one that's in las cruces and it's it's funny because they also wanted to plant flags at the school i left so that's going to be that's another spinoff of this is um i haven't put those pictures up yet because i'm still working on them but like marking the locations of trauma and oh wow 
also yeah to reframe it for myself because like as as you know with PTSD you kind of walk into physical environment sometimes and you're immediately like triggered by just the environment so yep. thinking about how to reclaim a space um and this act of like making an art object and then planting it in into this space forms a new memory that hopefully I don't know if it's working will override the bad one and then it becomes this like, haha, you know, humorous activity of me, like, you know, pointing the finger again and saying this, this place is a place where I was um, traumatized, uncomfortable. That is great. I mean, in that kind of way of I, I claim this, this place in the name of, but in the name of you this trauma. time, <laughs> in the name of trauma, sure, whatever, you know, the country of trauma. Um <laughs> Um, but it is a way to take back a space. Yeah. Um, and that that is a pretty powerful thing, especially when it's come, if it has come from a place where you didn't feel powerful at all. Even if sometimes it's, ha ha, that's fine. It felt naughty too. Like some yeah. of these are doctor spaces. So I'm quickly trying to do this while they, you know, they <laughs> so you can change. You're sneaking in. <laughs> Can I'm you like, do it in a lab coat? That'd be so awesome. <laughs> be sick. I'm trying to figure out how much I can get away with. You know, I'm sure eh? you know, probably wouldn't <laughs> think too much of it if they came in and saw me setting up a photo, but you know, awkward moment. <laughs> you know, a uniform goes a long way for making people That's feel true. like oh, you're supposed to be there. <laughs> and you are about to finish up your school. Yes. Well, Congratulations. Thank you. Yay. Um, um, any plans? I'm trying everything. So I have plenty of backup plans as I usually do because you know life never goes as you plan. Um, so I would ideally like to teach. So I'm applying to three or four job positions in printmaking. Um, I'm also applying to different like fellowships and residencies. I wouldn't mind residency hopping for a little while and just continuing to make work. Um that's, That'd be neat. That's the dream. I, I would like to just have the ability financially to just continue making work and showing. Crossing fingers for you. Yeah. And the wearables, I think, are the thing that people are most excited about. And those, like I said, have been going around. Um, they're getting a lot of different shows. And I'm excited about those pieces because they're kind of breaking the shell of just the disability shows. So they're starting yeah. to in mainstream shows that maybe have nothing to do with disability and I think that's really important yeah I think it's important to have both um just because frankly more disability art representation is super crucial yeah and anything that can kind of break those that border yeah is important who knows maybe the red flag pieces will uh be hopping up everywhere because i think a lot of people can relate to that and you can find you also on instagram at uh cat underscore chuddy um, all right and then i have the podcast exists on spotify and it also has a youtube channel so when there are photographs associated with the conversations you can see pictures of the people or the work they're talking about um and yeah, I'm trying to have things exist in multiple places to increase access. So awesome. So good. I'm so glad. Um, it I think it'll be wonderful. And you don't need to get any more pressure. I think you got enough. <laughs> <laughs> that was a feedback I got during one of my reviews. And yes, I've been taking that to heart and trying to figure out like the things that are the most important to me and the things that maybe can be edited out or put on hold temporarily so yeah i i hear you this is tricky for me as well <laughs> it always is but we can do it yep um, thank you yeah you're welcome anytime <laughs> <laughs>